guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel today for another replay analysis, another educational Rocket League video. Today we're analyzing Mayonnaise. Mayonnaise is a champion three slash GC1 player, he said. I'm guessing that means this analysis is about high champ three. Usually when people say two ranks, you know, I'm like platinum three, diamond one-ish. Usually means they're on the lower end of the spectrum. So I'm gonna assume this is around high champ three. Before we start, if you wanna get yourself a replay analysis, check out the description below. It's got all the details you need on how to do so. And also make sure to click the links down below to my other social media pages like Twitch. Make sure to follow me on Twitch so you can watch me when I go live, learn from the way I play live, ask me questions live, just come to hang out, have a good time, follow my TikTok. That's also down below in the description. Post a lot of short clips in more of a quick digestible format from these videos to my TikTok. So if you're interested in that, check out my TikTok and also check out my Instagram, which I just started back up the other day where I'm posting cool, funny highlights with live reactions from my live streams to my Instagram. So if that's more of your style of content that you enjoy, or if you enjoy all three, check out all the, the social media down below, follow them all, follow what you're interested in. But that said, let's get into the video. Right, right away, I like that you're cheating up. And I also love the G2 decal. I think they've got the best decal, the best new eSport decal. I'm surprised I'm not seeing more and more people using this decal. It's very, very nice. That's It's my favorite decal right now for sure. But I am happy to see that the person in the back, you know, two players were in the back on that kickoff. If we go back, the person who's closer to the back corner boost behind the person doing the kickoff is the one going for it, which is good. You always want to take the boost behind the person doing the kickoff, so it makes more sense to send the person who's closer to that boost to go get it. Meanwhile, you cheat up, also a good play. Almost always want to send somebody to cheat in 3v3 on kickoff. And one thing I will point out right away is something that I've switched up recently in my gameplay is on the cheat for kickoff, I don't think it's even necessary to flip. I think it is slightly less than optimal. It's another input that you have to unnecessarily do. And notice your flip clips the ground and you could have just driven up to this position without losing really any sort of advantage. It's very, very small, very small detail, but I don't think flipping up for the cheat off, for the cheat off, for the kickoff, for the cheat on the kickoff is necessary. Just drive, just drive, stay grounded, stay centered on your cheat up. Very small detail, but small details matter, especially when you're at this high champ three, low GC one area. Okay, let's see is developing could this have been any better let me go back one more time even all the way back to the kickoff what i'm paying attention to is where's reckless what's our cues in our mind of where reckless is at at this point in time when you come and make this touch so reckless most likely veered off from the mid boost at this point in time he's had a lot of time to start positioning for offense to start positioning where he needs to be. He's had a lot of time, a lot of free time. So while the pass off the corner isn't terrible here and it's the easiest play to execute in your position here, safest play to execute, I wouldn't be mad to see you go for the infield pass to a reckless who could potentially be waiting in the midfield. The only thing that's dangerous about that is at this point in time, you actually can't really tell if Yeet is coming to challenge you here. So I'm, I'm okay with the fact that you're not going for the infield pass. Because if Yeet's coming to challenge and you're trying to wrap around this ball, opens up the world where he's beating you a lot harder on the 50-50. And that would leave your, your third man in a position by himself for a minute. So I'm okay with you not making this infield pass. I'm okay with you taking the safe play in a future scenario. Maybe it's more obvious. Maybe you do know in this play and you can tell that he's not challenging you. If in your mind, you know this player is not challenging you, this would be a really good infield pass opportunity. Taking a look at Reckless, he should be positioned relatively close where he could have been an option for an infield pass. Not completely, but it's not terrible. It looks like he actually is positioned, assuming you're going to hit it off the corner. The only problem I have with the corner pass is it's not very difficult to deal with as defenders at this rank. Passing off the corner is 
pretty easy to deal with. Especially when you've got all three players back on defense still. So it's just not a very super effective play, but it is a safe play. And it is still early in the game. That demo actually helps you get back faster. Let me see this again. Nice. The execution and all of that wasn't the cleanest, didn't look the prettiest, didn't look the smoothest, but at the end of the day, you were you found yourself, you put yourself in a good position for your opponent's touch off the back wall. You knew he had to hit it into the side wall and you positioned to where it would bounce off of the wall, which is well done. And you passed it mid. Again, none of it looked the smoothest, none of it looked the cleanest, but it got the job done. Nice, good try. Going back actually to this, <clears throat> this to this attempt, Keep in mind, unlikely that a shot from here right off the kickoff is going to be undefended. So don't feel like you always have to go for the shot in a position like this. It actually probably be a lot more effective to go for the backboard touch, right? Instead of rushing to score a goal in a position where you're unlikely to score the goal, and then you pretty much immediately just end up passing the ball back to your opponent because they're ready for it in the net. You could always try to go for the backboard play, set up a sustained offense, break down the opponents a little bit more before you try scoring. Okay, I'm really not a fan of going all the way back for this corner boost. You find yourself on offense right here. You see Zell gets the challenge to maintain offense. It'd be one thing if he won this challenge and was heading back to your corner. But once you see that Zell wins this 50, I don't want you to go all the way back to your corner boost anymore. I want you to start turning in field, grabbing pads in order to maintain offensive pressure. Right. You see that you still have offensive, you're still on offense here. You still have the, the pressure. Instead of going all the way back to this boost where now say jam and joey ha since zell forced this pass yeet jam and joey has the next touch because he's going to be the next closest one to the ball if zell is not able to go again which it's unlikely he's going to be able to go again and maybe jam and joey gets this ball over reckless it'd be much better instead of being in this corner now where jam and joey's past reckless and he has a free ball coming at you would have been better if you had turned in field started grabbing these pads and you're slightly closer, maybe this path of pads going around that way, maybe maybe these pads here, yes, you'd only have 24 at that point in time, but again, if the ball gets over reckless here, then bam, you're there for it. Or if you took the slightly wider angle of pads, you got 12, 24, 36, 48, and again, you're even in a much better position and you know, if, if Jam and Joey gets his ball past Reckless at this point in time, you probably have the positioning to go for these two pads as well before going for the ball. So, in general, what I'm trying to say is if you're on offense, position in a way that you're able to maintain your offensive pressure. Don't go all the way back to your end for boost if you're on offense. Try to maintain that midfield pressure by staying on pads and staying up field.
And to make things slightly worse, that boost wasn't even up when you ended up going all the way back for it and you had to hesitate on it for an extra second before it finally spawned for you. So overall, you opened up a very large window of opportunity where you could have lost a lot of offensive pressure. And I haven't seen how this plays out yet. We'll see if that's indeed what happens. Probably not, but a lot of the time that will be what happens if you go all the way back to your corner boost when you're on offense. See how far out of the play you are right now? Right now you could be in midfield with probably, <clears throat> with all the time you've had at this point in time to pick up a couple extra pads. I mean, you could either be close to 60 boost or around 40 boost, depending on which path of pads, how close to the play you decided to stay on pads. And again, yes, in this play it didn't matter. But in a lot of other plays, in I would say more plays than not, it would matter. And you always wanna be able to capitalize on any opportunities because of good positioning versus never being able to capitalize on opportunities because you're too far back. You wanna be able to maintain being close enough to continue playing offense to maintain your pressure, but obviously not too close with not enough boots to get back if something bad happens. I spent way too long explaining this, let's move on. Fake. Nice. Gotta pass everybody. The play could have maybe been better, but <clears throat> at the end of the day, he did well. Again, not the prettiest play, not the smoothest play, but it was effective. You did, you did good. Good job looking for a demo on your rotation back there. What happened here? Zell just missed the touch and then Reckless uh, couldn't get the touch afterwards. Okay, but yeah, nothing wrong there with what you did. Good job trying to get a demo on your way back. Don't think you're executing a speed flip here. I think you are attempting a speed flip. I don't think you're executing one. Could be wrong. Try some speed flip custom packs where you have to speed flip in order to hit the ball. Quick Google search. You can search uh, speed flip training pack. You'll get a code on Google. The musty one, you could use Bacchus Mod, the, the Bacchus Mod plugin where you can test your speed flips. A lot of different ways to test your speed flips. Don't think you're doing a speed flip here. Just pointing that out. Nice, nice. Good attempt on the demo there. I would say here, I would honestly say that jumping for this demo and predicting that he's gonna try to jump over you is actually more effective here, right? A lot of time people will just sit there and not do anything because they know you're gonna try to jump at them, predicting that they're gonna jump and then you'll actually miss, right? So it's kind of a mind game here, but I would say that jumping for the demo here is gonna be the most effective play because in order to save a shot from your teammate here, most likely he's gonna have to jump. So by doing by predicting what he's going to have to do here, which is jump, and then you jump for the demo. Probably would have got the demo on him. Probably didn't matter because I think Jam and Joey ends up making the save anyways. But in a different play, in a different world where it's only Chef Chicago back, if you know that he has to jump in order to make the save, then you might as well jump to try to get the demo. Go where he has to go. Go where he's planning on going in order to get the demo, not where he immediately is at the moment. 
<clears throat> now one thing to keep in mind here, bad habit for a lot of people around this rank is double jumping when you don't have to and not double jumping when you should. So knowing when to use the double jump, when to use a fast aerial, and when to hold on to your flip in order to use the, the flip to get a better touch. Here, really no reason for you to double jump at this <clears throat> because you lose a lot of your forward momentum and you're actually slower to the ball had you just jumped and boosted towards the ball and then you could have used your flip to get a better, more solid touchdown field or you could have just not flipped, single jumped and aerialed into the ball and just brought it back down to the ground for a controlled play like you tried doing, but it would have been, again, a lot smoother, a lot more efficient, and you would have got to the ball faster. So you're just, uh, you're double jumping here unnecessarily, and it's just kind of messing up your approach to the ball, if you see what I'm saying. All right, instead of a double jump here, I guess also part of the issue is that you're, you're at like a dead stop, and you're jumping, you're jumping up, straight up before you're driving forward at all so instead of going up at the ball at an angle you're jumping up vertically and then boosting towards the ball so it's like <clears throat> technically not a fast aerial which it doesn't have to be in this in this instance right you don't need to fast aerial but so far a lot of your gameplay has looked very unsmooth your mechanics don't look the best and I think that's something you need to work on. Start uh, trying to make your movement around the field a bit faster, a bit smoother, a bit better in general. I think your car control needs a little bit of improvement if you wanna keep ranking up past this Champ 3 GC1 level. Car control's looking below average. <clears throat> okay, careful on this rotation here. Notice you guys are rotating all on the same line here. What I want to see you do here, instead of you've got all your players over on this side, plays also moving into this side, don't also throw yourself into the play, right? If this play keeps developing in this direction and it comes out this way and all you've done is chase down the play the entire time, at no point in time are you effective in this play. You can never come and challenge the ball because it's constantly moving away from you. Versus, if this play continues in this direction and you rotate out this way, then bam, you're able to challenge it. But if this play keeps going in this direction and all you're doing is chasing it down, you're never in a position where you can actually stop the ball from going into your net. And not only that, if something, when the ball is over in this area, and both your teammates are pushing to this corner here, if they're able to pass it out to midfield, it's completely uncontested because again, everybody's over on this side of the field. Nobody's contesting this side of the field at all. And that can just be fixed by realizing everybody, the entire play, pretty much the entire pitch is going in this direction. Rotate away from the ball, rotate away from the play. And that fixes the entire problem. Again, sitting on a boost, never a good idea. Gonna be honest. 99, 99% <coughs> of the time. 99.12345% of the time. It's not a good idea to sit on a, on a big boost. You're much more uh, effective and better off continuing your momentum, keeping your momentum and grabbing pads, right? Instead of sitting here, Right now, could have grabbed this pad, could have grabbed this pad, this pad, and then you're at, what, 36? Then maybe you rotate back to net here, and you're at 48. 48 boost here versus sitting there, and if anything happened, if the ball came out in this direction and they were ready to take a shot, look at that. You're not there for it. But had you been in net with your 48 boost, again, play comes out in that direction, bam, you could challenge it. So just 
pointing out where you can do better and where you're putting yourself in a bad position, right? Like earlier, you were too far back. When you were on offense, you went all the way back to your corner boost. Again, didn't affect you in that play, but more often than not, and especially if you want to keep ranking up, you're going to have to maintain your offensive pressure. Same thing here. You didn't even actually end up getting the boost, which is even worse. So now you've wasted that time sitting on the boost. You didn't get it. And instead of being in boost of 48 or a net with 48 boost, you're in net now with 12 boost. And now you're picking up your pads where all this, all this already could have been done had you just not made the bad decision to sit on the corner boost. So it's not about, it's not about in this replay, in this exact play, did it affect you? It's about, I'm pointing out what's the most effective play to continue ranking up, to push up in rank, in, yeah, to push up your rank. If you keep making these mistakes, if you keep doing these same plays, you're gonna stay the same rank. But if you take, if you eliminate out these plays, if you maintain your midfield pressure, maintain your offensive pressure when you're on offense, and you don't sit around waiting on a corner boost, you'll notice your rank will start going up because you'll not get punished for making those mistakes more often than not. Oof, that's just a goal. Why is that just a goal? Well, Honestly, likely, could be that you are pushing up, pathing over pads because you want more boost. But again, already pointed out, you could be in net with this amount of boost and you never would have had to push up wanting more pads. Probably wouldn't have got caught out of position not being in net. Yes, Zell should have had the save most likely. He probably has zero boost and that's why he can't reach that. It's probably on him. But I'm sure that play probably wouldn't have been avoided if you going way back. Let's, you know what? For the sake of the video, let's just see. I'm gonna enact how you would have looked. How, if I was in your position back here, it would have looked. All right, let's see this. Go back one more time. Okay, see. <laughs> what play is this? All right. Okay, we'll start from here. We'll start from here because whether you had rotated away from the play or you had rotated this way, would have Zell would have made the same touch either way. Probably wouldn't have mattered, right? Probably wouldn't have mattered. Yeah. Okay. So back here, instead of sitting on this boost at this point in time, bam! I've grabbed this pad. Bam! I've grabbed this pad. Bam! 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 And honestly, yeah, reckless makes that touch. That's fine. At this point in time. Probably would have been trying to be ready to push up for offense with again in this position. I think we're at 56 boost, maybe 48. Okay, then it doesn't come. It doesn't happen. I rotate out, let Zell go. And these pads are probably not there because I already picked them up. So I'm now at this back post area with again our 48 or 56 boost. This happens. Okay, I've pushed up again, trying to support reckless if he gets this ball past anybody that happens. Probably don't challenge that ball, turn back. Honestly, it might have still happened. <laughs> I don't know, it depends on if Zell's play, if Zell's play would have been any different, if his positioning would have been any different based on your positioning. Hard to say. In my enactment, it does look like you end up pretty much in the same place either way. So you're lucky, all right? I'll give you the uh, I'll give you the check mark here. You're lucky. This play, I don't really feel like you personally would have ended up in a totally different spot. But you never know. If Zell had seen you position slightly different at any point in time he might have also positioned slightly different at any point in time and he might have had time to grab boost he might have picked up a couple extra pads might have grabbed the corner you never know
Okay. Oh, this is dangerous. Well done, well done. Yeah, a bit of a unnecessary challenge here. Careful, careful. Don't get too impatient. Don't get too overzealous. Don't get too... What's the word I'm really looking for? Aggressive. Nice. I've really got you pinned down lately here on offense for the last uh, 30 seconds or so. Ooh. Close on that, close on that. Again, going all the way back to the corner for a boost. When you're on offense, <clears throat> yes, you missed that boost. Too bad, so sad, but just turn out to your left, start picking up hats, right? Turn out to your left, bam, and start coming up. One, two, three, got 36 boosts, and look at this, you're in position to capitalize if the ball comes out midfield or in front of the net. You would hope one of your teammates rotates out. If neither of your teammates rotate out here, and you're sitting here for a shot, I probably wouldn't go for it because if you get beat, nobody's back. But again, the premise still stands that if everybody plays better, if everyone's doing what they're supposed to, ideally they're not double committing in the corner, one of them's on their way out, and if a shooting opportunity comes out for you, you're able to go for it. Whereas if they do their job correctly, but you do your job wrong, you go all the way back for the corner, one of them did rotate out, there is a shooting opportunity, but you're not there for it. And then they're like, ah, oh, why is my teammate not there to take the freaking shot? You know what I mean? So it's about putting yourself in a better position more often than not. Oh, hoo, 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 hoo. what a save, what a save. It's not bad. I was going to say you could have looked for the pass to Reckless, but it's not really hugely worth passing to Reckless here because he's so far back, right? If you, if you pass to Reckless here, it's not a terrible play. He could potentially take it up the wall, but if you pass to Reckless and he hits it upwards, it's pretty much just as effective as if you were to just hit it upwards. It's not a huge... If, if this is the play to hit it his direction here and then he hits it upfield, it's not much different than if you just hit it upfield yourself. But, you could argue, it is worth trying to pass it to him because he could take it up the sidewall. He could let it bounce off the sidewall, come middle, and take a, a play, make a play on the ball rather than just banging it away. <clears throat> so you know what? I am going to say actually here, I am going to say it probably was worth passing to Reckless here. It doesn't have to be a perfect pass. Something in this direction, though, enables him to, again, make a wall play, enables him to let it bounce off the wall, make a make a play on the ball, whether he starts a solo aerial play, starts a dribble play, passes it back to you in the midfield. So yeah, I think, I think passing to Reckless here is actually the better play. So unfortunate Zell didn't realize that you were in net for this touch and that Reckless is off to the left. Like you can pass to Reckless, Zell cannot. So it's, de it's definitely your ball. Not only for that reason, but mainly for that reason, because you have more options. Zell, if he hits this, again, all he's doing is, all he's able to do is hit it up field, give the ball away. Whereas you can hit it to a teammate, not give the ball away. That happens a lot, even at GC2. Starts happening less at higher GC2, nearing GC3. And then by GC3, people are usually pretty good at knowing when it's 
better for, you know, in this position here. By GC3, people are usually good in Zell's position at realizing, okay, I can't pass to this teammate, but my other teammate who's in the net can, so I'm going to leave it so I don't just bang the ball away, giving it away. The person at this angle can pass to our teammate, and then they have more options. But at champ 3, GC1, that's a very, very common problem that the somebody in Zell's position will not understand that concept. OT. It's looking like it. Nice. This is fine. Rotate out of the play. Why are you rotating straight at your teammate? You literally came an inch away from bumping him. Come on. I know you know to rotate away from the play. I've seen you do it multiple times. I've seen you adjust your, your rotation multiple times in this analysis. You look like you're about 60% of the way to having this ingrained in your mind, to having this be muscle memory, to rotate away from the play. You're close to mastering this skill, but you're not quite there yet. All right, notice. Plays on the left wall behind you. You know it's moving down in this position on the left wall. You're rotating directly into the play. Or you should be rotating off in the same direction as Reckless. Reckless should be grabbing pads and getting ready to turn back up field. You should be rotating behind him. And you most likely are grabbing the back corner boots here. Right? Reckless should not be taking himself all the way back to the corner boots here. He should be picking up some pads and getting ready to turn back up and either support Zell after he wins the challenge or follow up on the ball after it gets past Zell. You, since you're third man in this position, have a little bit more time to rotate all the way back while they are taking care of challenging an offense and then you're rotating back up yourself. No, 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 no. This, this is fine. I'm, I'm glad you didn't try like half flipping for this, right? I, I'm glad you're not trying to get up on the wall and meet this because there's no way you're getting to the wall in time at this point. So if you're just positioning here to wait for the bounce off the wall, that's fine. I was really scared that you were going to try to get to that ball though on the back wall. But arguably, what you also could have done here, after you realize you can't get to this ball, just rotate, rotate out, rotate the third man. Bam, this happens. You can't do anything. You could just turn to your left, rotate to the back post, get ready in net, let your teammate behind you go for this ball instead. This is actually the better play to make. This is the play I would make. What you did isn't necessarily bad because you're still in a position to defend the net if you have to, right? You're waiting for this bounce and... If somebody comes and challenges and shoots, you're still like right here in the net. It's not bad. But the cleaner play, the better rotation, the play that puts less confusion in everybody's mind, the play that keeps your your defense running more smoothly is to just rotate out. You don't have a play on this ball. Just rotate out. Let the person who's behind you come in for the ball and then you're behind them.
Right, like that should never have been Reckless's ball here, honestly. This should be Zell's ball. You're behind Zell and then Reckless rotates behind you. So this entire rotation was kind of screwed up a little bit. Reckless, notice, is ro rotating into the play. It's, it's not bad. Let me see it from his position here because he could be reading that this play is about to go to the left. So he's actually preemptively rotating away from the play, which is a thing that happens. Let's go back one more time. I mean, yeah, it's not terrible. It's not terrible from Reckless. But this shouldn't be his ball. He should not be first to this ball. It looks like he might be the speediest one on the team. Has the less hesitation, the least hesitation on the team. This should have been Zell's ball, though. Bam, Zell. Grab some pads, rotate out, rotate around. Reckless is in position to go for this. Zell, rotate out this way. He's at the back post. I think that's what he ends up eventually doing. It's just a little slow. Ooh, never mind. It's not exactly what happened here. All right, Zell, at this point in time, is here. Okay, so this didn't play out exactly how I thought because Zell got... Zell didn't make the rotation for pads, right? If here, he just rotates out along that path of pads I pointed out, along that outer ring. Then he w finds himself at the back post, not getting bumped. So that's one way this play is idealized, is optimized. It never gets bumped like this in the first place and is at the back post immediately. But this way, this way that this play develops, so one mistake leads to another mistake where he's out of the play longer. He should be back post now. And this should be his ball in a more optimized scenario at a higher rank. This would be Zell's ball. You would have rotated out behind Zell and Reckless would have rotated out either behind you or staying towards the net in that back corner where he found himself after he rotated back. So this whole entire play was somewhat messed up by everybody. Except really reckless. Reckless had the least of a mistake. The the least, the less. Made the smallest mistake here. Anyways, moving on, moving on. Your your takeaway from that breakdown is you could have just rotated out instead of sitting under the ball waiting for it to bounce off the wall there. Would have been the the best possible play to make. Ooh. That's decent. Uh oh. Oh my god, what a double touch. Okay, trying to get a kind of random chaotic pinch here. The better play would try to make a controlled play here, right? Just drive up the wall. I always say just drive up the wall, see what you can do after this ball bounces. This ball bounces here and you just drive up the wall. <clears throat> All right, with that bounce, can't tell did you touch it before it bounced yeah slightly hard to read how this ball would have interacted with the wall here had you just positioned here though no matter how that ball bounces you're in a decent position to do something with it rather than just give it away yeah in this position there was a potential to get some sort of crazy chaotic play that could potentially give you some sort of scoring opportunity. You're making this analysis real hard on me, man. Because the plays you're making, the reason this is a hard analysis for me is because the plays you're making aren't bad. 
but they're not optimal. They're not bad plays, and I can understand why you're going for them, but they're not optimal, and they're not very typical, which is, is you don't want to be readable. You don't want to be typical, right? But I think optimal is the better word. I think these plays aren't typical because they're not optimal, if that makes sense. I don't, you know, at my rank, these are not the plays that you would be making. And I don't think it's because people at my rank are playing too predictably. I think it's because players higher ranked know what is more optimal, know what is the more effective play more often than it is not. So I think believe that this analysis is a little bit difficult for me because again the plays you're making aren't terrible they work sometimes but they aren't the most effective plays the most of the time Yep, your ball, your ball. Oh, baby. This is intense. It's close game, close game right now. All right, careful about when you're choosing to flip. May have heard it before. But you don't want to... You don't want to flip when there is about to be a change in direction on the ball because when you flip you're locked into the direction that you're choosing to go in this case you're locked into putting yourself really far up field when this position is setting up your opponent to have a really hard clear off the backboard and then you're going to find that the ball is going right over your head and you're pretty much useless in your positioning because you chose to flip up field whereas if you recognize Okay, this ball's going to the backboard and he's ready to bang this off the backboard. There's no point in me flipping up field and getting too close to the play where then the ball's just gonna go over my head. Instead, I'm just gonna stay grounded, just stay driving, and then I can wait here. And if he misses the, the clear, if he gets a poor touch, I'm able to go for it. If he gets the hard clear, I'm able to make the decision, should I go for it? Should I aerial up for it, right? Can I reach it? I can draw this somewhat more realistically where the ball would be going right if he bangs it the ball's somewhere up here heading out in this direction and you're like okay can I reach it can I keep it in play yes I go for it no I leave it let my third man who's even further back go for it so again it's just about optimizing your play but this is a more general tip be careful when flipping up field. If you notice there's about to be a change in direction on the ball, you shouldn't be flipping because when you flip, you can't also change your direction to match the ball's change in direction. Oh, there is a line on the screen. Oh my god, you got like three or four touches right there. <laughs> so weird. It's amazing how you got three or four touches there, but they did like nothing. That's just that's just funny. That's the only reason I was looking at that. Oh boy. Good try, good try. Rotating into the play again here. This might be slightly less obvious. But bam, what I want to see you do... That boost wasn't there, that was a glitch. So this boost isn't here after this play. 
Look at this. In this position, you know the person who's coming for the ball is going to be coming from this direction. So the ball is about to be moving in this direction. So by rotating this direction, you're rotating into the play. What I want to see you do here in your position, recognizing the ball is about to come out in this direction. I want you to rotate out this way. Bam. Rotating out this way. Bam. And then look at this. Now you've got your one, two, three man rotation. Zell's first. Reckless is second, you're third. Almost feel like Reckless should have been the one challenging this ball, not Zell. We go back and look at this again. I think you can make a case for that this should be Reckless's ball. Let's see. Bam, bam. Yeah, I would definitely say that 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 reckless turned a little too early here. He gave up on, on this play a little too early. Bam, this happens. He should know this play is about to come out in this direction, and he has a pretty good angle to challenge anything that happens here. Definitely think that this should have been reckless's challenge. You rotate out to that mid boost off to the right, like I said, picking up pads on your way. Reckless goes for this ball. Zell's supporting him as second man, and now you're third man rotating back into the midfield. What a game we got on our hands, holy. This is probably one of those games where you're playing it and you're just having a good ass time because it's like a very competitive game, a very close game. Could we have done something better here? The backboard's pretty open. The only difficulty is your, your run up on the ball somewhat makes that a little bit difficult. But at this point in time, at this point in time, if, you, if you're already making your decision that the backboard's pretty open here, I think that could have been a pretty good play versus just hitting it to the corner where there's really nothing to come out of it to come of it. Wasn't a bad, wasn't a huge play, wasn't a huge misplay. Three minutes and 30 seconds into an overtime. Somewhat, you're somewhat, what happens usually is you're trying to make safe plays, not trying to concede that game winning goal so your first reaction isn't always make the best play, it's make the safest play. So right like right there, it's not a huge deal. Does he have it? Oh wow <laughs> nice way to finish way to finish wasn't expecting that honestly wasn't expecting that but you clutched up when it was important when it when you needed it when your team needed you most you clutched up clutched up <coughs> so i think this one's pretty easy to say what your biggest takeaways are your biggest takeaways are going to be when you're on offense you're maintaining offense your team has the next touch on the ball in your opponent's end. You shouldn't be, as third man, rotating all the way back to your corner boost, taking yourself completely out of the play and conceding the midfield. You should be making a decision. Again, if you're on offense and your team has the offensive pressure and your team is about to be the ones that have the next touch, you should be picking up pads in the midfield, around the midfield, maintaining that positioning, staying closer to the play in order to maintain your offensive pressure. 
in this exact replay, I'm not sure that we saw you get punished for not maintaining midfield pressure, but that doesn't mean that more often than not, you won't get punished or more often than not, you won't miss an opportunity that could have been there had you maintained your midfield pressure. And that's what it's all about. It's about optimizing your gameplay so that you can continue to rank up, capitalizing on as many opportunities as possible. Second, a biggest takeaway is rotating away from the play. You were about 50-50 on rotating away from the play well. Half the time you did it well, half the time you didn't. So you still need to keep working on rotating away from the play. And then lastly, third biggest takeaway is for a high champ three, low GC one player, I think your mechanics look slightly below average, to be honest. Keep working on that car control. I don't think you need to work on necessarily rings maps. I think uh, a lot of free play and custom training packs would do you some good. And I also think a lot of obstacle course maps would do you a lot of good, like uh, like dribbling obstacle course maps because you just look somewhat slow and wonky and clunky still in your movement, which a good portion of players by GC1 sort of have that movement around the field looking a lot smoother a lot cleaner so i think uh, your car control definitely if you want to hit gc2 i think you need to improve your car control improve your mechanics a bit overall so that's it other than that it was just small little you know mistakes that i pointed out here and there maybe small little ways that you could optimize certain plays again what made this replay somewhat difficult for me was a lot of your plays weren't bad but they weren't optimal so a lot of the time your plays would work but a lot of the time in this game your plays won't work in, in different scenarios in a different game in a different parallel universe a lot of the plays you made would get you punished rather than be okay so that's it that's it guys if you like the video make sure you like the video Share it if you think that there's some useful information in here that your teammates should should watch or your opponents should watch that some trash talker in game is talking trash about how you play badly but really you think he played badly and something from this analysis can uh, shed some light on the situation. Hey, share this with whoever needs to see it is what I'm trying to say. Like the video, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Pew, pew, pew. Peace out.